Why did Scarlet decide to play Protoss in an EPT Finals? Why do the Koreans hate special so much? And why did Bob Dylan's music catalog sell for 50 million more than Paul Simon's? Stay tuned to find out the answer to all of these questions in this episode of StarCraft Today. Your favorite StarCraft news show. Code A finished up last week with five matches, starting with Ragnarok versus SOS. A match perhaps that was anticipated to be very good, but turned out to be a little bit of a bummer. SOS freestyling through the best of five and also showing off that he is capable of playing late game in an absolute snooze fest on Light Shade, in which both players decided not to attack for a solid 45 minute. Uh, in the end, SOS just kind of aim moved across the map and Ragnarok fought completely without vipers, being patient for 45 minutes to wait for the final fight, then to only fight without the most important unit that Zerg has in a late game fight, was a bit of a weird decision, I'd say, a little little bit debatable perhaps, so the series was uh, yeah, not the greatest in my book, uh, followed up by Bion versus Percival, Bion managed to take out Percival relatively easily, as was expected. Solar versus Gumiho, a quick 3-0 sweep as well. Gumiho not quite at the level where he needs to be in order to compete with those top 16 Koreans. On the final day of Korea, we had two more matches with Keen versus Ryang. Keen managing to take out Ryang 3-0 relatively easily. And Kyur versus Linok. Uh, once again, Kyur managing to take out Linok 3-0. Kyur looking to be in a fantastic shape as a Kyur fanboy. That makes me really happy. After always, after Code A concludes, we have the group nominations for Code As. And this year, there was a little bit of controversy as a certain Reddit user wasn't too happy with how everyone was treating special and perhaps calling the Koreans a little bit xenophobic against the only foreigner in the Code As nominations. Now, I have to say, I find the group nominations myself to be a little bit cringe and a little bit forced, but kind of the goal of the group nominations is to banter with each other, to make jokes about each other, and yes, also to be a little bit mean. This is obviously uh, re reinforced by production wanting to make it a good show. And I think the things they said might have not been the nicest, but it's it's all it's all a little bit of a game, it's all a little bit of a joke. I didn't think it was too bad, but there were a lot of people who were actually disagreeing with me in the comments. And when I read through them, I was I was surprised. People people funnily enough getting way more personal, angry, upset, and mean in the comments than anyone ever was in the entire group nomination process. But you can check that out yourself and make up your own mind. Maybe you think I'm an idiot and people should be a little bit more sensitive for each other, but I honestly didn't really see what was wrong with it. Um, so yeah, let us know what you think of that. For this week's game of the week, we have a game from the Salad Cup. Yes, the actual name of the tournament is the Salad Cup. Salad Cup <laughs> number one between Classic and Bion. This game had absolutely everything from start to finish. It was a banger. It started with Bion being extremely aggressive, trying to drop, trying to find any way to pressure his opponent, going into a six, seven minute lasting base trade into a, a GG that perhaps was a little bit debatable on the side of Bion, and when I say a little bit debatable, it, I don't want to call it a rage quit, but you know, he might have just pulled an Idra, thought he was in a worse position than he truly was. It's a, it, it really is an insanely sick game, and it shows that PvT can also be a really fun matchup if both players want to make it a fun matchup, or in this case, especially Bion being so extremely aggressive. So, game of the week, Classic versus Bion, Romanticize. Watch that crap. For this week's Zoom, we're going to have a look at a Russian player that not a lot of people know about. But I think after today, a lot of people will at least love him a little bit. He managed to take out Clem, Coffee, and Marine Lord. King Cobra is about a 5.8, 5.9k MMR player on EU that tends to cannon rush a crap ton. He's a professional cheeser, a cannon rusher, void ray all ins almost every single game, and apparently can also turtle into Aertos as he took out Clem in a pretty long macro game with Mass Tempest Carrier Disruptor, took out Marine Lord with a two base Tempest into Carrier build order and uh, also obviously with a Void Rail in. Clem did manage to, to defend the Void Rail in but this guy had the run of a lifetime uh, actually beating three really good Terran players in Coffee, Clem and Marine Lord. Especially the Frenchies are going to be a little bit upset by this. But fantastic run King Cobra and uh, once in a lifetime, buddy. Keep it going. <laughs>
we already covered an important part of the ESL Open Cup EU this week. We saw Clem, the tournament favorite, get knocked out by King Cobra. King Cobra actually making it into the semifinals where he lost to Lambo. Lambo in the finals also managing to take out Max Pax 3-2, finishing the series with a beautiful queen walk, knowing uh, really where the strengths of his race are. <laughs> and uh, taking home, uh, I think, his first ever cup victory. It might be his second, but I think it's his first ever. So big up to you there, Lambo. In NA, Clem decided he wasn't going to be happy with being knocked out by King Cobra today and decided to play himself. Got to the finals where he met Scarlet 2 0 up against Scarlet Zerg, and then Scarlet decided to switch to Protoss. Now, in the past, this has worked out well for Scarlet. I remember a game in MLG where she managed to beat Dong Rei Gu with an 8 gate all in on the map Frost. This time against Clem, however, it didn't work out. This Clem just kind of beat her and said, thank you very much for playing Toss. That was a little bit easier than your Zerg. Clem taking first place in America and uh, probably still had an okay day at the end of the day. You know, 200 bucks from America, 10 extra points. So uh, yeah, Clem's going to be happy. Moving on to Korea, we had a bit of a Protoss party as the only two non-Protoss players that were of a decent level got knocked out in the round of eight. Cure and Special got kicked out there. From there on out, it was green, green, green in the bracket. End of the day, Creator managed to take out Haas in the finals. Haas who took out Classic, by the way, which is not unimpressive because Classic did look really freaking good against Zest in his Code A match. Um, so yeah, big congratulations there to Creator. I think this might actually be his first cup victory as well. So two first timers and well, Clem uh, and what a 35th, 35th timer. And uh, well, good job to everyone, the EPT Cups. Next week though, EU will be mine. Mark my words. And in today's clip of the week, we have the Muslim with the calmest reaction I've ever seen to a huge widow mind shot. Ever. Upcoming week, we do have the first day of CODES on Monday 30th of August. And not that many big tournaments are going on at the same time. So that's going to be it for me this week. Thank you all so much for watching today's episode of StarCraft Today. If you had a great time, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit like. And Bob Dylan just has better music. Bye bye.